I'm old carnivore Steve's wife, Cynthia, and don't worry, he's fine. Everything is good so far, as we know. Um, two years ago, Steve came to me and he said, I'm only going to eat meat. And I was like, what? <laughs> is he crazy? Here's the thing. We were both very, very sick. We, it was early in the year. Christmas was over. And the two of us both had enormous problems. We weren't sure if we were going to make it to the next Christmas. And uh, then he comes up with this crazy idea that he's just going to eat meat and butter and I don't know what else. And eggs, I think. I don't even think he had eggs in the beginning. He was just meat, water, salt. That's what he said. Well, Steve doesn't cook and Steve doesn't shop and Steve's not on a budget. I am. I'm the one who does that kind of stuff. And and I'm his wife and I'm kind of worried that my husband's going to be killing himself with this nonsense diet. I mean, I, I didn't understand it. It was, it was kind of crazy, if you want to know the truth. Um... But he was adamant. Uh, he started showing me the research, you know, dragging me down to the, you know, to watch the YouTubes of Dr. Chafee and Dr. Baker and Ken Berry. He loved Ken Berry. But basically he said to me, vegetables will kill you. And Dr. Chafee said so. And he always hated vegetables. I mean, really, he always hated vegetables. His idea of a salad was the parsley on the plate, you know, and but he did love potatoes and he liked uh, baked bean or baked uh, um, baked potatoes with cream and cheese and chives. He loved that stuff. But that was out. So all the stuff that we had and I had a lot of stuff I had been keto, I had been paleo, I had been all kinds of things. I had enormous amounts of coconut oil and, you know, uh, fake flowers of all kinds. I had, you know, coconut flour and almond flour. I mean, we're talking enormous amounts. None of that was going to work anymore. Um, I did have pork rinds. So that was the one thing that we were still allowed to have. The other thing is that they don't tell you is that the day they start carnivore, you can forget going out for a fun time. There's no more Mexican restaurants with, you know, margaritas and, you know, no more burgers and beers. I mean, we drive past places and I'm like, oh man, I miss that. I miss that. I really do miss that. I miss that because I'm, I'm the cook. I will say that in the beginning, I, I, you know, I was loading up on steaks and chops and stuff for Steve. And in the beginning, and we're talking Ohio in February, he was outside, uh, you know, working the grill. And it was rough and, and it was raining. And, it was, and if it wasn't raining, it was snowing. And I felt bad for him. You know, I, I could see he was struggling. And then when I jumped on the bandwagon. Um, it was a lot for him to be out there cooking steaks. And he's a, f he's a fanatic about making sure that they're good steaks, that they're tasty steaks, that, they, that they're perfectly prepared and they're, they're tender and juicy and edible. Well, you know how it is with guys and they're, they're grilling. But he was getting himself sick because he was outside in the cold and the wet and grilling and then you know the whole the whole thing anyway i bought him a ninja you know it was an indoor grill air fryer and roasting thing you know it was it was really kind of cute uh it was not the big fancy one but the one i got did have a probe it was the, the one of the original ninja indoor grills i love it i love it i gotta tell you it was a lifesaver now I can cook my steaks and my pork chops and, and even a good piece of lamb on that Ninja and pretty much half an hour, maybe a little more, maybe a little less. 
And we enjoy cooking on that. And it was about a year in before I had the courage to start using the temperature probe. You know, you started sticking in the temperature. Wow. If you get a Ninja indoor grill, start using that temperature probe. I don't use it for fish. I don't always use it. Sometimes we do put things on the outside grill, especially in the summer. But we really, really had this wonderful Ninja indoor grill. And for a whole month, now Steve will be very strict. He's meat, water, salt, you know. He he kind of freaked out when I put uh, a garlic powder on the lamb. But he was very strict about it. And I did put garlic powder on the lamb before I cooked it. We had a chunk of lamb that we would put in the Ninja uh, and salt. And I soaked it in lemon juice and, you know, I kind of concealed that from him for a little while. But being the wife or the spouse of somebody on carnivore, you have to learn to adapt. Now, I have to say I'm the one reason why he might have fallen off carnivore because I'm the one who does the grocery shopping and I'm the one who brought home the watermelon. I thought it was just one time, but we went crazy for it. It was summer and it was tasty. Um, I'm the one who brought home the, you know, the uh, tangerines for Christmas. And um, I, I know better now. We can't do that. I know that. Um, and so I have a lot of good advice. And I think that, you know, it would be nice if we share that advice, me and Steve, on the cooking and the budget. Uh, he wants grass-fed and grass-finished beef. Do you have any idea how hard that is to get at your local grocery store? You know, fortunately, we live in a city where you can get go to Whole Foods. That's my cats. They're hiding behind the screen. Um, fortunately, we can go to Whole Foods. But Whole Foods is, I mean, I'm kind of surprised at how nice Whole Foods is, to be honest with you. You can get organic, and you and their meat department is open with them with a butcher back there right up until the minute they close. So you can go running in there at nine o'clock or eight o'clock at night, and ask the butcher to cut you a steak, and he'll do it. Or you get something out of the the uh, meat counter, and they'll give it to you. The bad thing is is that it's expensive to buy some good meat. Right now, I mean, when we started, it was twenty one ninety nine a pound for, you know, boneless ribeye, <clears throat> and that's what that's what has the most fat. And and maybe in a later video, I'll talk to you about how I butter his steaks, and we have to have fat. And as a woman, <clears throat> when I was doing this, I I needed a little bit more flavor, and I needed a lot more fat. Um, so there is that we were having a hard time with that. We were struggling. I have to tell you that today is March 13th, 2024. And I looked up when we started two years ago on carnivore. And it was, he started maybe two or three weeks before me. So he was into February. I started on March 12th, 2022. And on March 12th, 2022, I was 242 pounds. Mm -hmm. I lost 60 pounds. Now, I've since gained back about 15, 20 of that. Um, but I'm under 200. I'm starting again. And I'm dropping almost a pound a day. You know, I, I have to tell you. I do struggle with this carnivore thing, and I, I cheat. And I hide it from Steve the carnivore because, well, he needs it. You know, I mean, he's, he's, got, he's got some serious health problems, and he's about nine years older than me, so he needs to keep this up. I hope I've gotten enough to satisfy the YouTube gods to uh, put this out there. I... I want you to know 
that this has been an exciting journey and it's been eye-opening. One of the things Steve didn't tell you is that when he met me, when we were first dating, and we were just basically good friends, we were hanging out together, you know, and hanging out and going sailing and, you know, and being part of a club and having a good time. And we weren't serious, you know. And then I got psoriasis over my whole body. Didn't start off over my whole body. It started off on one knee. But then I got a strep throat and boom, my whole body was covered. I had to take time off from work. Steve came over and had to cook for me. And I told him, go find yourself a normal girl. And he said, well, I don't want a normal girl. I, I want you, which is, you know, tell you a lot about Steve. Here's the thing. We wrote a little book about where we got off, cleared up my psoriasis, and we didn't even know what we were doing. Now, we used vegetables. We got rid of everything, I mean, as for carb-wise, and I think it was the zero carb. But in my little book, I was talking about <clears throat> on the 10th day, you're going to experience this crazy whole body tingling sensation, like you're being bitten by a, a million fleas, and then the next day, your skin is going to start to heal. Now, I'll, maybe if you're interested, we'll talk more about that, me and Steve, because he came up with a lot of that. And a lot of things we got right as far as like, I didn't know what oxalates were. I didn't know I was oxalate dumping. But a lot of things we got wrong. But back in 1988, believe me, there was a lot of chemicals in the beef. There were steroids, there were antibiotics, there was who knows what they put in their feed. There was no, you know, I mean, you'd have to go out and find a farm and raise cow yourself if you wanted it completely organic, grass-fed and grass-finished. And who knows what it would, what it would taste like, because that is also something we need to talk about is how does it taste? Because if it's nasty, you're not going to want to eat it, and neither am I. So, hmm. I'm going to let Steve upload this. I hope you enjoyed it. You know, if you want and you like it, me and Steve could talk to you about his journey and who he looked to and how he did his research. Um, he had a lot of convincing to do with me, but here we are two years later, still kicking. And hope to be here two years from now. So y'all have a good day.